What's up YouTube? I'm here doing my prediction video for UFC 209. Let's start the bottom. The first fight is Albert Morales versus Andre. Crazy last name. And to me, Andre looks like he's a little bit better. I think he's got a little bit better striking, a little bit better than grappling. I think Morales is basically just a striker. I think Andre's got the speed advantage and Morales has got the power advantage. And I think the speed's just going to be out the power a little bit. And I say Andre's probably going to win maybe by TKO, but probably by submission, I think. Next is Amanda Cooper versus Cynthia. Also a very hard last name to say. To me, Amanda Cooper wasn't that amazing on the show. I, I didn't think she looked that amazing in her UFC um, fight just recently. I think she just barely edged it out against a chick she was supposed to win. I think Cynthia's a really good striker, and I think she'll be able to kind of beat Amanda up on the feet, and she'll be able to set the takedowns, and she'll probably win a decision. Next is Tyson Pedro versus Paul Craig, and I'm not a huge fan of this fight just because there's not a lot of prospects at 205, and right now these two guys are like the only prospects aside from a couple other guys. You know what I mean? The the, the, the new up-and-coming talent at 205 is very limited, and having two guys that are both this early in that, you know what I mean? I just feel like they should be fighting other people that are kind of older and like on their way out. But whatever. Um, I think that Tyson Pedro looked really good in his debut. I mean, he got clipped early and was able to get the takedown submission pretty quick. I think Paul Craig looked even better. I think his striking looked really solid, and I think his jiu-jitsu looked really, really good. Um, to me, it's just one of those things where I'm just basing this on the fights that I've seen for both of them. And to me, Tyson Pedro, you know, he almost got knocked out in his first fight, and Paul Craig just looks like he's got decent striking. I think if this hit the mat, they'd be about even. So I'm going to go with Craig just based on the fact that I think his striking is a little bit better. I'd say he might win by knockout or TKO. Next is Michael Godbeer versus Daniel Spitz. And I would honestly pick Spitz if he had more time for this fight. But I think he only had like a week or two to train for this. So I'm going to go with Michael Godbeer. I just think he's got like really good striking. And I think he'll be able to probably win by knockout or TKO against Spitz. Next is Yuri Alcantara versus Luke Saunders, and Luke Saunders looks like a really good up-and-comer, kind of, you know, he's one known the UFC, he looks like he's good everywhere, but he hasn't fought in like a year or two, and I just, I don't know, I think Yuri's just too good everywhere for a guy like that to kind of just come up and take him out after such a long layoff, I think Yuri's probably going to either win by knockout or maybe submission. Next is Mursad Betik versus Darren Elkins, and to me, um... Mursad Betik, he, he's really good. You know, he's 4-0 in the UFC. I think he's like 11-0 overall. I feel like his striking is really good and his wrestling and ground and pound is both really good, you know, offensively and defensively wrestling. I think Darren Elkins, you know, he's a grinder. He likes to just wear guys out. I don't know if he'll be able to do that against Mursad, but I do think he'll be able to stay clinch with him the whole fight. I think if Mursad can get distance, he'll be able to shoot this guy up, but... I, this is a really tough fight, in my honest opinion, because I could easily see it going either way. I'm going to go with Elkins. I just think he'll be able to stick to him the whole fight and grind him out, but I wouldn't be surprised if Mursad's able to just keep him off of him and just beat the crap out of him for three straight rounds. But I'm going to go with Elkins. I say he wins by a really close decision. Next is Marcin Tibura versus Luis Hen Henrique. And Luis looks like a really good wrestler, but that's about it. I don't think his striking is that amazing. I think he kind of relies on the fact that he's able to take people down when he can't. He kind of doesn't look amazing. And I think Marston looks really, really good in my opinion. I think his takedown defense is pretty solid. And his striking is amazing. I think he'll be able to keep this fight standing, and he'll probably win by knockout sooner or later. Next is Alistair Overeem versus Mark Hunt. And... You know, Alistair, his biggest weakness has always been his conditioning. I think that if he took this fight to the ground, he'd be able to win pretty easily. I mean, he's already got a win over Mark Hunt by submission. Mark Hunt's takedown defense has gotten a lot better, so you never know. He, I don't know if Alistair will be able to take him down. Um, you know, Alistair's been playing that kind of waiting game and then countering. I don't know if that'll work against Mark Hunt, just because I think Alistair's conditioning isn't amazing. I think Mark Hunt will be able to kind of walk him into a corner and, and catch him with something. And this is kind of how I see this fight going down. I think Mark Hunt will be able to kind of do what Ben Rothwell did. I think um, he'll be able to take kind of the kicks and stuff early. And eventually he'll land that big shot and probably knock him out with it. I say he probably wins in the first round, kind of like how um, kind of like how Ben Rothwell did against uh, Alistair. Next is Lando Veneta versus David uh, Tamura. Or, or Tamor, I mean. And David's really good. I mean, he, in my opinion, I think he's probably one of the best up-and-comers at lightweight. I think his grappling looks really, really good. And his striking's always been amazing. I mean, he, he's got one of those crazy-ass, like, 45-0 and 0 as a kickboxer. Um, I think Lando, you know, he's the best, one of the better up-and-comers right now, too. 
But I think that Lando's going to want to strike with David, and I think that's not going to bode well for him. I think David's one of those guys that, like, his striking's just on another level. And I think his wrestling and, and grappling are really underrated. I saw in the Ultimate Fighter, like, he looked really, really good. I mean, he was able to get taken down, but he was able to fight his way back up pretty well. And I think he's gotten way better since then. I think that he, he's probably one of the, you know, most underrated guys right now in the whole of UFC, in my opinion. I think that this will be a really close fight. It'll probably be a split decision, but I'm going to go with David. I just think that this will be striking most of the fight, and I think David's going to edge him out. Next is Rashad Evans versus Daniel Kelly, and these are two guys with pretty similar styles. They both are kind of boxers with, um, like, forward aggression, like, wrestling type of grappling. And um, it's kind of like wrestling versus judo, and I've seen Daniel Kelly get taken down before against, you know, really good wrestlers have been able to take him down. I mean, his, his takedown defense is pretty solid, but guys with speed advantages are able to kind of take him by surprise. And, you know, Daniel Kelly's pretty old. He's like 41, 42, which is why guys that are faster than him are able to kind of get him with those fast takedowns. And Rashad Evans definitely has that speed and athleticism advantage. So he could be able to, he could take Daniel Kelly down over and over and just beat him up with ground and pound and maybe win a decision or win by TKO. The only question is, where's Rashad at? I mean, he's pretty old too. You know, he's had a lot of injuries and now he's moving down to a new weight. I'm going to go with Rashad on this one, but I'm a really skeptic pick for Rashad. I just think that it's one of those things where who knows if he's able to shoot those doubles like he used to. If he can, he should be able to win this fight pretty easy. If he can't, then, you know, Daniel Kelly might just be able to pick him up, pick him. You know, even boxing-wise, I think Rashad should be able to beat this guy, but you never know. Like I said, he's getting older and moving down to this new weight. You never know, but I'm going to have hope. I think that Rashad's still fast and explosive, and he'll win by decision. Next is Khabib Nurmagomedov versus Tony Ferguson, and I like both of these guys. I think it's horseshit that Connor doesn't have to fight both of them. I think that Connor, you know, he's not an idiot. He's doing this on purpose. This magical time off that he's taking is so he doesn't have to fight Khabib. You know, he's hoping Tony can beat him because he has a way better chance of being Tony than he does Khabib. And um, I honestly just feel like Khabib's going to win this fight. I just don't see how he can't. I feel like I've seen Tony Ferguson, even though he's on this like nine fight win streak or eight fight win streak, whatever. Um, what's it called? I've seen fights, like, in in those in that win streak, he's been taken down by guys and kind of controlled. Like, Abel Trujillo did it. Um, Lando Venata did it a little bit. He didn't take him down, but he dropped him and was able to kind of beat him up on top a little bit. And uh, Danny Castillo was the biggest one, I mean, in my opinion. And then, um, what was it? Even Josh Thompson. You know, even though Josh Thompson was losing that fight, he was still able to hit takedowns here and there and control him for a little bit. And to me, it's like, if Khabib can take you down, you're not getting back up. You know what I mean? If those other guys were taking him down and able to control him, you know, then I feel like Khabib's going to be able to do the same. You know, Tony's got a lot of finishes on his record, but they're volume finishes when he kind of gasses guys or he kind of hurts them. He'll go for chokes or he'll pour it on with a lot of punches. But he's not like a one-punch knockout guy. And his submissions are really good, but if you're going to compare grappling, I mean, Khabib is definitely better. I feel like wrestling and jiu-jitsu wise, Tony will be able to hang with him on the ground, but I don't think he's better than Khabib. I think Khabib will be able to hit the takedowns when he wants, and I don't think Tony will be able to keep this fight standing and use his long range like he wants. I just see Khabib winning a decision, maybe getting a submission late. Finally, we have the rematch between Tyron Woodley and Steven Thompson, and to me, I feel like the first fight showed me a lot more than it did other people. I mean, I saw... Steven Thompson get taken down the first round because of kicks, and then I saw him stop kicking as much, and he was able to kind of dominate the fight until he got caught in the fourth with that big punch. To me, it's like Steven Thompson's faster, he throws bigger volume, and he just needs to watch out for those big punches and just keep this fight as like a boxing match instead of a kickboxing match. I feel like if he's not throwing kicks, um, Woodley's going to have a harder time taking him down, and his takedown defense has been really amazing. We saw in the Johnny Hendricks fight that his takedown defense has gotten really, really good. And I feel like he just needs to be more cautious about the big punches. And if he's able to do that, he should be able to win a pretty clear-cut decision. This is kind of how I see this fight. I think Steven Thompson is going to use his range, just keep it boxing-wise and stuff takedowns, and probably end up winning a unanimous decision. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe.